So the Fuxa Planter Foundation have been working on some impressive stuff and they've also released some beautiful documents which talks about the development of various parts of Blender. And today we're going to go through some of the project updates, some improvements and some announcements. More so, the Fuxa Humble Bundle alongside Flip Normals has just recently announced the Extreme Add-on Bundle for Blender and ZBrush. And this is a packed bundle that comes with some impressive stuff for those who are thinking about getting these add-ons for a ridiculous discount price. The terms and condition that applies with this one and you'll find the possible links in the description. And with that said, let's explore some of the brand new Blender updates that are now available. So the MPR project, which just started out sometime in July of 2025 with the folks at Dilongu Studio, is having an update. As previously, the MPR branch of this was announced and a lot of people actually hopped onto it. This prototype received a lot of attention with users contributing nice examples of what is possible with such system. Of course, the feedback has actually shown the folks at Blender Foundation that there is a big interest within the community and there is a wide range of effects to consider. However, the amount of flexibility with the prototype have come at a cost. And this cost is the fact that it has locked the NPR feature within EV alienating cycles from part of the NPR pipeline. At the same time, this has deviated from the EV architecture, which could limit future development. And after much consideration, the folks at Blender Foundation alongside the folks at Dylan Goose Studio have decided to modify the design to address some core issues. And this includes the multi-stage compositing, which now enables the modification of shading pixels at the least level rather than manually managing compositing within a scene. There's also the use of compositor nodes for object-specific modifications, which in turn would streamline the workflow. They've also gone through to talk about some other impressive things, which includes the anti-aliased output, which addresses issues with fridge artifacts and compositing anti-aliased input. And this anti-aliased output would also improve the visual quality by refining how the compositor processes pixels for final render, which I think is going to be super cool in the long run. Another cool thing that they're currently doing as well is the Converge input. And the Converge input will deal with noises in rendered image, which is affecting the stylized effects. And these in turn would ensure a smoother MPR result by allowing compositor process and denoise the input. And finally, engine features. And this has to do with certain functionalities which will be included and this would allow for built-in interaction with light transport and other rendering features. And these features are not exclusive to MPR workflows and they will fit very well within the engine architecture. And some of these features that we'll be getting includes the Ray Query, the Portal BSDF, Custom Shading, and Depth Offset. We'll possibly be seeing more development of this as this is being slated to start after Blender 5.0 is released and this is being planned for November of 2025. Now for those who like to take a look at this or possibly you like to read up on all of this stuff that we've just gone through, then you might want to consider checking this one out. At the same time, there's a couple of interesting projects that folks at Blender Foundation have been working on. So if you simply go over to the project update, you can see this. Now, these announcements were made earlier in the year and some things are looking pretty cool. Vulcan has been fully completed, which means that this is possibly going to be shipping with Blender 4.4. There's also some almost completed project, which includes the UV sync, better integration across node trees, and stuff like hair dynamics, shape key improvements, remote asset libraries are currently in progress. So all of these projects are running concurrently, and chances are that we will be getting some cool new beautiful updates with 5.0. And just like the NPR project that we just talked about, the NPR, Story Tools, Texture Cache, and MIP Maps are still under design and prototype. Some things haven't actually started, which includes layout sculpting and dynamic override. And for layout sculpting, I think that is something that would be pretty cool to see in Blender. However, there is already an add-on that can allow you to do all of that layout sculpting. Same thing can also be said with the Baklava tool, which seems to be coming anytime soon, as there's also an already existing add-on that allows you to do layered animations in Blender as well. Something which is also available in terms of announcement is the declarative systems in geometry nodes. And this deals with the development of declarative systems in Blender's geometry node to simplify physics simulations, particularly with particle systems. And this applies to particle simulations and of course, simulations like hair, clothes, and also fluids. As Blender currently supports particle simulation using imperative approach where users can define computational steps manually. However, with a declarative approach, this would now focus more on combining predefined behaviors like emitters, forces, and also colliders, making it easier to build complex systems. At this point, the developers are working on bundles and closures, which will facilitate more of a declarative system. And this is going to allow behaviors to be encapsulated and passed efficiently to solvers for simulation to actually happen. So just think about it like when you're programming and you've got to define some functions, 
some variables, you know, all that stuff, which can be packed into either a class or you can simply bundle these together and reuse them over and over. And this is basically what the folks at Blender Foundation are currently thinking about doing. And in this case, these improvements could enhance the UI management and of course, when working in the geometry node and overall the asset library management and integration. And like we mentioned earlier, with the current state being more of an imperative particle system tool, this currently lacks robust tools for declarative system design and creating particle systems simply means that you'll be combining various complex parts without being able to have one dedicated workflow or framework to actually handle all of this. Now, outside the fact that this is more simulation driven, the introduction of old bundles, closures, lists, you know, all of that stuff will also come in very handy in various areas like line art generation, terrain modeling, and asset scattering. This is also going to be very useful because it will allow creators to actually focus on what should be generated rather than how to generate stuff. Now, if you're wondering how the bundles and closures would work, just like we explained when you kind of define stuff when programming and, you know, pack them into classes, this would allow multiple values to be passed through a single connection and closures. And of course, this is also going to enable functions to be transferred within a tree node. And that brings us to the whole encapsulation thing that we mentioned earlier. And these tools will definitely simplify the management behavior for sure without requiring deep technical knowledge of geometry node. And of course, as the folks at Blender Foundation are shifting towards a more user-friendly decorative system, in the coming releases, we'll potentially be seeing more easier and accessible means of creating procedural physics simulations and content using geometry nodes. And with bundles and closure, this could also streamline workflow and enhance the usability for both casual and professional stuff. And that is what the declaration systems in geometry nodes is all about. At the same time, there's also a frame node improvement, which is now available as well. And this is aimed at Blender 5.4, the LTS, which is yet to be announced. And this is definitely going to be making large node setups more readable and easier to manage in Blender. Now, there's a couple of shortcut keys and stuff that have been moved around. But in this case, this is more dealing with the visual improvement, the streamline shortcuts, the frame-first workflow, which simply suggests where users create labeled frames before adding nodes. And this is also similar to defining functions before you code. And for sure, for those who like to explore with this one, maybe you want to see it, test it, see what you can do. You can simply go ahead and check out Blender 4.5 right now, which is currently in alpha. So Blender 4.5 is currently in alpha. It's got some things going for it. And we're definitely going to make a video about some of the things that you should look out for in subsequent releases. So this is it. For those who like to take a look at all of this that we've talked about, possibly you like to see some of this project, explore them. Links to all of this is going to be in the description. So do well to check them out. And of course, if you want to get started with learning geometry nodes, or maybe you want to create some very cool stuff and you're looking for amazing add-ons, then you can simply take a look at some of these ones that are currently available on Humble Bundle for an extreme stew. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.